Hi guys, it's Christy. Uh, welcome back. Uh, first of all, just a bit of an apology for the video quality here. I'm filming in the evening, so yeah, not so great. Uh, I guess I work at all hours of the day and night, so yeah, you're gonna have to put up with it this time. Uh, anyway, I thought I'd do a small scale painting tutorial for you this week because, hey, it's really been a while since I did that last time. And there are these uh, models by Tone Towns Miniatures that have been making a lot of rounds on social media recently and they actually sent me some samples as well. So I've got this 50mm uh, uh, guy. This is a mounted sort of 17th century arquebusier, so kind of a handgunner type figure. He's pretty generic, so you could probably use him in any of the numerous conflicts that were going on at that period, maybe with just some minor adaptations. Uh, you'll notice there's just one model here. Uh, the last time I did 50mm it was, I think, a whole squad of Germans. Uh, but that's really kind of express choice here because I really wanted to just focus on one model at 15 millimeter and see, you know, just how good a job I can do, you know, really try to do my best work and not kind of get distracted by other factors or trying to get more, you know, models done. So, you know, hopefully that actually ends up working out. And of course, you probably saw this model is, of course, on a horse. So uh, if you're looking for some guidance on doing horses in 15 millimeter, maybe this will help you out. I don't know. Let's see how it turns out. So as always, I'm starting off here with all the paint colors you're going to need for this model. And it is quite a bit, but you know, this model, even though it's small, there's still a lot of different parts and they all are going to be needed to paint different colors. Uh, there's a couple things I want to point out here. You'll see the glaze medium is there because we're going to be doing a little bit of very simple glazing. And also, uh, you'll notice that big bottle of metal color that's actually just brand new. I bought it yesterday at a show. Um, it's a new it's a new formulation of Vallejo Gold and I'm pretty excited to try it out so I'm hoping it works a little bit better than the old Vallejo Air Gold because that was kind of it, it didn't have a very good shelf life let's put it like that I'm gonna start out here by working on the horse uh, first of all because it's one of the sort of biggest chunks of this model, but also because it's sort of on the lowest layer and we want to work from lowest to highest in terms of sculpting detail. I'm going to be doing a brown horse for you today just because um, that's a very generally useful color and I've never done any other horses at this scale so I want to start out with something I think you can kind of make the most of. I'm base coating the, the model here using a uh, Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown. Now I want to go for a slightly red tone to the horse here. So my highlight first on the horse flesh is gonna be taking the German camouflage black brown and some Vallejo flat brown, which uh, is a little bit like chocolate brown, which I often use, but slightly on the redder side. So it just gives a little bit of a different look to this model, which is what I'm going for. So this mix is maybe about 50-50 uh, at this point, and I'm gonna be applying it pretty much everywhere, as you're gonna see. I'm really only gonna leave pure ca German camouflage black brown, really in deep shadows, sort of around his belly and under his legs and stuff. So at this point you don't have to be too concerned with, you know, picking out details or being very precise with your paint work. All right, so my next highlight now is just going to be pure of Leo uh, flat brown. And you can see now I'm starting to get a little bit more careful with where I apply the paint. I'm starting to focus, as you would expect, on areas where I want there to be highlights. And I'm, you know, going to sort of follow the same rules of sort of starting um, in the middle of the areas where I'm highlighting and sort of pulling the paint outward so that I can get a little bit of a blend going. I mean, it's true this horse is much smaller than 28 millimeter, but it's still big enough that you really still have to pretty much concern yourself to the same degree uh, with blending and getting, you know, sort of smooth paint work if you want a nice result on this horse. Now my next two highlights here on the horse's skin are just going to involve mixing sort of increasing amounts of beige brown into my flat brown. So I'm going to start out with sort of a slight uh, addition of beige brown and then the next uh, layer will have even more in there. And even though this is 15 millimeter, I'm working pretty much as subtly as I would uh, on a larger scale a model. 
uh, just because I think it, 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 this, if the scale, it still will take that. It, it'll still reward those layers of extra paint, I think. And it will still go, I think, faster than you would find it would on a 28 millimeter model, just because the, the, the areas you have to paint here are gonna be smaller and, and that in and of itself does cut down a bit on the painting time. And now for my next highlight, I'm applying just pure beige brown here. And you can see, even though I've been already kind of building up to this color in my previous highlights, it still goes on pretty intense over the, the skin color that I already have. So I'm trying to apply it nice and thin and really uh, blend it out. You can see when I'm painting the horse's musculature with this color, I tend to uh, apply the, the paint first. Uh, to sort of the top areas of any muscles or bulges and then sort of pull it down from there because then you get this sort of nice highlight and it sort of emphasizes the form in a really sort of uh, appealing way and really emphasizing the forms and shapes is extra important uh, basically the smaller the scale is that you're dealing with. Now I'm going to finish the highlighting process here by applying some very light paint, very carefully in sort of strategic areas. Uh, I, I, th these sort of very extreme highlights, I first started out with uh, some tan yellow mixed into my beige brown, uh, and you can see I'm just applying it really to help uh, even define some of those forms of the horse's muscles even further. Um, and, and I'm still blending it out though carefully. I don't want it to be uh, too strong and I still want the end result to look uh, nice and smooth when I'm done. But you can see once I've applied sort of a uh, sort of initial layer and blend it out, I then go back in again with that color and sort of apply it again to just add even more brightness and emphasis in certain areas. I finished off with just some pure tan yellow also just here and there sort of very very sparingly just to add the, the, sort of the final pop of color in areas especially around his eyes um, mouth and nose where you've got these fine details that you really need to emphasize next I'm going to just grab some black paint and use that to base coat some details on the horse including his eyes inside of his nostrils and his hooves here, uh, nothing really earth shattering. I then add a really quick wash of Nuln oil to the horse's uh, mane and tail and let that dry really well. And here's where the glaze medium comes in. I've taken uh, some black here with just a hint of that beige brown in it again. And I've uh, cut that down with glaze medium to make it pretty transparent. And you can see I'm going to start building that up on the horse's lower uh, legs and muzzle. Just because very often you'll see uh, brown horses with this kind of coloration. They have sort of this darker uh, sort of coloring around the legs and mouth and I want to sort of get that here but I wanted my color to be a little bit transparent just so it sort of meshes a little bit better and transitions better into the brown on the rest of the coat. Once I had applied uh, several layers of the black glaze uh, I then felt that I needed to bring it back up some of the highlights on those areas a bit so what I did was I took some just pure black and then I made this sort of 
a very dark uh, brownish gray shade to highlight. Uh, the first highlight I used here, I mixed uh, the beige brown into the black to get a, a sort of a nice shade, and then I, I highlighted even further by doing the same thing, but mixing the black this time with the tan yellow, and then I just applied that uh, fairly lightly back over the areas that I wanted more highlighted um, on, on those part of the legs that I glazed. And I basically just followed the same highlighting uh, patterns that I had when I was doing the horse before in brown, but I'm just now going back over them all with sort of different colors just to, you know, bring that contrast back a little bit that I lost when I applied the black. Next, I'm gonna really kind of lightly overbrush the mane and tail with some flat brown here, just because I wanna build up a little bit more color variation in here and get a little bit of a highlight effect going. And once I've got this on, and you can see I'm really sort of applying it along the top and leaving the bottom of those surfaces a little bit darker. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go back in one more time with my black wash just to sort of get make get the that color back in the recesses and just help unify everything together into something a little bit more cohesive. Next, I'm gonna be highlighting the horse's hooves. What I'm doing here, I've taken some black and I've lightened it just a little bit with some dark sea gray. Uh, as sort of my base highlight. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go back in uh, with just uh, pure sea gray and kind of carefully uh, add in some sort of look of sort of shininess on the hose. This is one place where because this is relatively small scale, uh, I didn't feel necessary to blend as much and it was just okay to kind of use uh, sort of careful line work and dotting to sort of indicate those sort of shiny effects on the hose. I finished off with some very uh, light uh, gray, which I made by mixing the sea gray with some white. And I'm also gonna use the white just to very carefully dot sort of a small white reflection in those horses' eyes because that really just helps bring the whole thing to life a lot more. I'm now gonna be doing the uh, saddle and tack on the horse. I'm using my usual leather formula, so I'm starting out here with a base coat of German camouflage uh, black brown. Now, at this point, had I been painting a larger scale model, I would have started out by highlighting the leather with some chocolate brown and then added another intermediate layer probably, but, but, I'm, but I'm gonna be admitting those two things from the process here because this model is smaller and the leather bits are so tiny. So I went straight from the German camouflage black brown here to uh, beige brown, which I'm just gonna be sort of carefully applying, sort of starting at the edges of the leather areas and building in from there. But in, in, a, in practice, since most of these areas are so thin and so small, you're not really gonna have a lot of area to actually sort of blend into, except maybe on certain parts of the saddle or the uh, gun holster. I highlighted the leather areas further by taking some of Valero Iraqi sand and mixing it into my beige brown and applying that first to sort of, uh, um, I guess, second highlight on everything. Uh, you can see, particularly on the straps, I'm applying that light color along the top uh, to just sort of bring those areas out. And it's, it's really particularly important uh, on these areas because they're laying on top of the already brown horse flesh that you have that, that extra light color there to help differentiate the two bits. Uh, once I'd applied this sort of intermediate highlight, I then went up to just pure Iraqi sand and basically applied it in the sort of same way to the same areas. I just, but I just tried to keep it a little bit lighter and a little bit, keep my touch just a little bit finer so that I didn't make the whole thing too light. But again, I went heavier with the lighter colors on the strap areas just so I would get better definition. And you might even find it necessary because again, you're dealing with so much brown that you need to uh, go back in and define some dark lines around the sort of outer edges 
of the um, straps. Uh, you can use German camouflage black brown for this or even black if you feel like. I, I definitely found that that was helpful in some areas when I was working on the bridle and sort of the harness areas. Now for the face. I'm gonna be just base coating this real quick with some beige brown and then once that's dry I'm gonna throw on a wash of Citadel uh, Reichlin Flesh Shade. Now the face on this model is really really tiny uh, so there's not actually a whole bunch to do. I think even in terms of 15 millimeter models this guy has a particularly small face and he's wearing a hat and yeah there's, there's a limited amount that you can really do here but I'm still trying to get some different sort of tones in here. So uh, my first highlight here uh, was like in 28 millimeter, a mixture of the beige brown and some Iraqi sand. And I'm just basically using it to thinly highlight pretty much all the areas of the face, except the mouth and eye sockets. Uh, and once I've got that on, I'm gonna go in with my uh, trusty Vallejo Black Red and I'm gonna use that to add definition in the areas of the eyes and where the mouth is. You also want to add it under the nose and I also found it was easy, helpful to draw in sort of two lines going down diagonally around where his upper lip would be to add shadow there because um, the sculpting here is so fine you, you don't get that detail that you would on a larger model so if you uh, just add it in artificially with paint it looks uh, just fine at this scale. Uh, then I went on with some just pure Iraqi sand and kind of continued to add some highlights which were basically done on his chin, on his nose, and sort of along the top of his cheekbones and a little bit on his upper lip, but otherwise didn't really need to go much further. I finished finally with a mix of white and Iraqi sand and again tip of his nose, tip of his chin, and just some dots again sort of under his eyes. just those kind of areas to add a little bit of emphasis. But beyond that, you, you probably don't want to do much more, or actually probably won't be able to do much more when it comes to highlighting a face at this scale. All right, so first of all, you may have noticed that the color quality of the video suddenly changed, and that's because I realized about halfway through filming that I had a huge fingerprint on my uh, camera lens, which I now wiped off, and that's, oh, all of a sudden everything is clearer. So my apologies that uh, I didn't do anything about that sooner. What I'm doing here is uh, base coating his boots and his gloves, and I want them to be kind of a buckskin uh, rawhide color. So I'm using uh, beige brown as sort of the color to start with and I'm building up several layers so that I get enough coverage over the black. For my uh, next highlight on these areas, I'm grabbing some of the Vallejo Tan Yellow I used earlier. Um, I thinned it down so it's somewhat transparent and I'm gonna just build that up now in layers over top of uh, the base. Make sure your paint is definitely thin because especially when you have to paint the fingers of his gloves, it helps to have paint that's going to flow easily and be nice and smooth. To finish highlighting the gloves and boots, I grab some Vallejo Buff and again thin that down a fair amount and I'm applying that in sort of layers uh, over areas of the boots and gloves where it's necessary. Uh, it's pretty yellow looking right now, which I don't think is a bad thing, but if you, what I ended up doing to sort of tone that effect down a little bit was I added one final super high highlight where I mixed a bit of white uh, into my buff, and that helped give it a little bit more of a creamy, uh, muted effect, which I think uh, is just a little bit more natural looking uh, and just gives the whole sort of look of leather it just works a little bit better and also it's important to add that extra strong final highlight uh, at this small scale to make everything really pop nicely. Now our rider's wearing sort of a long sort of jacket jerkin uh, sort of coat, I'm not sure how you best call it, which uh, is underneath his cuirass but pretty much over top of everything else. Um, and, I, and I'm going to be base coating this first with a Vallejo Black Red. Now the shade I'm really going for on this uh, particular 
piece of clothing is sort of a really natural kind of muted almost matter red so uh, what I've done here is I've taken some saddle brown from below and mixed it into the black red as a first highlight and then I'm going to continue highlighting uh, first with uh, pure uh, saddle brown by itself so we've got this again this nice sort of muted uh, red color and then I continued the highlighting uh, process by mixing in uh, some Vallejo buff mostly because I already had the Vallejo buff out from the last step and I could just sort of mix that in to sort of gradually lighten in the red and now of course if I was going for a really bright red color I would not do that because by adding that yellowish tone in you're making the whole thing a lot more pastel and kind of soft and um, dirty looking almost but because that's kind of the color I'm going for in this case it's, it's pretty much ideal I'm getting kind of this pastel uh, brownish red shade which I think is really nice looking and I think particularly appropriate for clothing of this period. Now I'm really really quickly going to do the pants. They're hardly showing here so I'm not going to get really concerned about the color. I just took some black and some of that dark sea gray I had and used that as the base and then I just highlighted a little bit with some pure uh, dark sea gray, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter because you really just can't see very much. While I'm working with these gray shades though, I'm going to also be painting his collar where it comes out over his caress because that's a lot more important. I base coated that with a mixture of the dark sea gray and some white and then I just took pure white and kind of layered that on several times to basically build the collar up so that you ended up with essentially what should look like a white collar on the model. I decided to do both his saddle blanket and sort of the sleeves of his undershirt in kind of a blue shade, but I want it to be a very sort of muted kind of natural grayish blue color kind of in keeping with the overall look of this model and the kind of tones and colors that were kind of popular at this time so uh, i took a base coat which is a mixture of black and vallejo oxford blue as my base coat and then to highlight i just went over the areas uh, first uh, with uh, pure oxford blue and then i continued uh, getting lighter highlight shades by just adding white into the oxford blue uh, several times and just highlighting that up. It doesn't have to be anything complicated and again it's fine to make these sort of more uh, dull kind of pastel shades because it just works with the type of model and the period. For his sash and the feather on his hat, I wanted to work in a slightly more bright and interesting color, so I thought yellow would be a good choice here. Uh, I'm using a base coat here of a Citadel Averland uh, Sunset mixed in about 50-50 with some of the Vallejo Beige Brown that uh, I already had out. To highlight the feather and sash, I first applied several layers of just pure uh, thin down Averlin Sunset, just trying to sort of build up that yellow tone in sort of slow uh, gradations. And remember, because it's yellow, it tends to be poorly pigmented, so you're, you're going to have to do that if you want to have any sort of yellow color in there at all. Uh, particularly on the feather, I also really took my time to make sure to try to define and pick out some sort of separate areas and clumps in that sort of feather textured sculpt. Now I'm just trying to generally keep with the muted palette that I started with here. I'm going to continue highlighting my uh, yellows here by first mixing some buff into my Averlin Sunset and then applying a layer of pure buff and then finishing with really white, just pure white with just actually a hint of the buff mixed in to make it slightly yellow. And I'm just gonna be really dotting the color on here because the areas are so small. But by having those really uh, light white yellows uh, sort of 
next to areas of the sort of darker yellow, you can get some really nice sort of almost shiny looking effects, uh, which are super effective and sort of super eye-catching at this scale particularly. I'm now going to paint the wooden stock on his gun. I'm using a base coat here of, of Vallejo Chocolate Brown. Uh, then to highlight, I am going to grab some Vallejo Saddle Brown and mix that into the chocolate brown and kind of go over it with that uh, before moving on to pure chocolate brown. <laughs> and then um, taking from there uh, some beige brown mixed in with a little bit of buff which is going to kind of serve as a really bright, shiny highlight, especially along the edges, or if I want to give the sort of impression of a little bit of uh, shininess to the wood, or a little bit of reflection happening on the surfaces here and there. Now it's time for some uh, steel metal areas. So I've got some black, which I've mixed in with some Vallejo Air Gun Metal to get kind of a very dark metallic shade. And that's the base coat on his stirrups, most of his gun hardware, his cuirass, and just a few little bits of the horse's tack, which I hadn't uh, painted yet. With the base coat on, I'm just going to then move ahead with uh, pure uh, Vallejo Air Gun Metal which I'm going to use to highlight all of those uh, parts further. Now, beyond that, you don't really need to highlight the uh, stirrups or the gun parts much more than that because you want them to be a sort of a more restrained color. But I then went ahead and took some Vallejo Air uh, Chrome, which I used to add a brighter, shinier finish, particularly to the cuirass um, and the horse's hardware because you really want those areas to be nice and bright and shiny looking. Just a tiny amount of sort of gold type metal on this model. I just took some German camouflage black brown as always and mixed that Vallejo Air Gold into it for my base. And I, I think I only really ended up painting just a few elements on his gun and then also I look like he might have been wearing a gorget around his neck so I painted that gold too and I just highlighted these areas quickly with pure Vallejo Air Gold. The only thing left to paint now uh, is his hat. Uh, these came in a lot of colors during the period but I opted for sort of a nice black gray felt. So I'm base coating here first with just pure black and the highlighting was really really simple. I just took some of the dark uh, sea gray and just sort of started gradually adding uh, more and more of it into my black uh, to just sort of carefully build it up. Uh, I'm not sure if the hat is supposed to be black or gray, and it didn't really matter to me, just as long as I got kind of a nice looking tone. Uh, I actually used some just pure dark sea gray uh, as an edge highlight along the brim and sort of along the top, sort of sharp edge um, of the top of his hat. Okay, so here is our finished um, mounted 17th century arquebusier model uh, all finished up. I think this model turned out reasonably well. I'm particularly happy with the look of the horse flesh. I put a lot of time into that honestly. Uh, not as much time as if this had been 28 millimeter but, but that was mostly just because it was smaller. I think I applied just about as many layers of paint to it as I would have to uh, a larger model and I do think that really shows and it still is I think worth the effort if you want a really nice looking uh, finish and I was a little bit faster and painted a little bit more simplistically on the model of the guy himself but on the other hand I felt like you know the horse is really the focal point of this it's the thing you're going to see the most and it has the largest sort of surface area so I thought it was the most important that I do that right and then on the smaller bits of the guy you can afford to be a little, uh, just to do a slightly more simplistic job, but I think the overall effect it gets is very nice. And I really did not at all aim for this to have any sort of, sort of specific historical designation or come from a specific nationality or anything like that. I really just sort of tried to paint everything using colors and materials that I thought were plausible 
at the time for some sort of generic mercenary type uh, horse unit. Uh, and so yeah, I think this is nice. I, I was reminded that 15 millimeter really just isn't my thing. I mean, I can do it, but I do not really enjoy it all that much. It just lacks more, a little bit of detail that I really prefer was there. And I, I, I don't know, I just, I just don't find it as rewarding as working in larger scales. But I know it, it's definitely interesting to a lot of you guys, and it is certainly an interesting and different challenge. And I have to admit, it took me a long, long time to, to motivate myself to do this figure. I really, really, really was not interested in doing it. But after I got started and really pushed myself through, I was glad that I did in the end because I think it was an interesting experiment. It was, it was also worthwhile for me to, you know, again, sort of see how I should kind of use my techniques and scale them for this um, size of model. So again, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, uh, leave me comments with what you thought. Uh, of course, do subscribe as well to the channel if you haven't got a chance to do so already. And uh, that is everything for now. So uh, I will see you next time.